uh, camera's batteries died again, so I decided to go get my camcorder, and it's probably what I should have been using this entire time. So, anyway, um, what I want to show here, uh, I did show that it doesn't seem to be keeping the keys that you held down held down. Um, one thing, other other thing I wanted to show is that as soon as you um, go into one of those shift states and hit a button, uh, it's it's actually making the Nostromo stop responding. So, you zoom out here. So, when I'm, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit the forward button. Let's do forward and right, right? We'll hold that down. And then as soon as I hit this state, you can see it's red. Now it's, it should think I'm holding down the 2 button and the 8 button, uh, or number key on the, on the keyboard. What you'll see is that in WordPad, uh, it's actually going to stop responding altogether. Um, whereas as soon as I hit those keys on the N52 to my right here, um, you'll actually see those keys on the screen, and, and that's, what, that's what needs to happen. So as soon as you hit this, this key map override button, which is, which is as we know, a momentary toggle, um, and now it's, oh, look at that. It, it held itself, and then it turned itself off, and now it's back again. Odd. Uh, I'm glad I got that on camera. So, anyway, uh, I've never seen that before. I don't know if I overloaded it or what, but um, what I want to show here, back on the screen, is I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hold the W key down, and then I'm going to hit a shift, and then what you're going to see is you're going to see it stop. So, get back here, zoom in a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to hold the W key down. Let's see if we can get the whole row so we can watch it while it goes here. Okay, so I'm going to hold the W key down, and then I'm going to hold the shift, and as soon as I do, you see it stops. If I let it off again, and now I'm holding the W key, nothing's happening on the screen. So we can get that W key, so W key is being held down. Nothing's happening on the screen. Now if I hit it again and hold it, it happens, right? As soon as I hit the shift state key, and you, as you see, I'm holding those both down nothing's happening on the screen. Okay, so I'm going to let go there, and then what I want to show next is the same behavior on the N52. So let me zoom out. Apologize for the zoom in and out. Of course, um, I'm not a cameraman by nature, so I'm just doing the best I can to show you guys what's going on here. So um, let's look at the N52 for a second. Um, as we can see, we'll do the same thing. We'll hold the W and the, and the D key. And, and what it does is it's basically remembering the last key that I type, but it's, it's having similar behavior, whereas it's WD, but it's only remembering the D. And if I were to add an A, it's doing that as well. But it continues to go, so it doesn't stop. It doesn't ever stop putting the keys down, which is different. So let me clear the screen here. Control A. So one thing that's different between the two is that if I'm hitting W and then I hit the shift state key, it knows that I'm holding down the two key. So it changes to the two key. If I introduce the key to the right of forward, which was W, it'll switch to three, right? So if I'm hitting W and D, W, D for forward and right, and all of a sudden I start holding that button down, see every time I hit it down, let it off, even if I hit it one time, you can see it's draw. It's actually putting the two and the eight in there. Some of the time, see, right here, two eight. It played it one time. Played it one time. So um, where I would expect that key to always take over uh, with the Nostromo, it's not. So if I'm hitting the WD key on the Nostromo, Razor Nostromo, as you see here, if I hit the W and D keys, it's going to play the W and D keys. But if I hit those keys, so 
if I hit those two keys, which I'm kind of going back and forth here, it's only every once in a while playing the eight and the two. And wh one thing where it's very different is if I'm holding those keys down, right? So now it thinks I'm D. And as soon as I hit that momentary shift, it stops altogether. I let it off again. Now I'm still holding those keys and it's not replaying those. I do that on the Nostromo, holding WD. Second I hit that, it switches over and it continues to play the two and the eight because it knows that's what I want to hit as long as I have that button held down. I always want my keys to be repeating. So when I let off and I go on and I let off and I go on, you see it switches back exactly how I would expect. On the Nostromo, it stops. The, the cursor stops altogether. And then when I let off, still is not playing the W and the D key. And now if I hit this button, oh, it's shifting state all right. But it's not typing anything on the screen anymore. So I know you've looked at me sit here and, and hit buttons on the, on the screen, but, but uh, the, the two pieces that I'm finding that are really important here are the latency. So uh, whenever you're, you're playing with these devices, you need them to react real time. You need them to react just like a keyboard would. Uh, as soon as you press a, a key, for, for ever, however long you press the key, it needs to be retained. That the the time needs to be exactly how you pressed it. So if you pressed it for 30 milliseconds, then it you're, it needs to register and play that 30 milliseconds as soon as you're pressing it. So there cannot be any latency whatsoever in the device. So if I'm hitting, uh, let's see, I don't know if I can do this. Let's hit the W key a whole bunch of times on the screen and see if it repeats them like it did the red state. So let me zoom in a little bit here. Let's see here. Alright, so I'm going to hit it a whole bunch of times. No. Doesn't seem to be the same. It may not be registering all my keys, but um, it doesn't doesn't seem as if that builds up in a queue kind of like the momentary shift state did. Um, so I think that probably your momentary, uh, your logic for switching for momentary needs to be looked at because, um, again, this, uh, you know, it's it should not be building up and playing those red state put button pushes far after I've let go of the button. Um, that's definitely not something if you look at both of these side by side, it's not something that you see present in the N52. So, um, which the N52 has got it right. And maybe this is why it feels more precise and feels more real time, whereas this feels kind of more sluggish to me. And that's just my opinion, having used this for at least, uh, well, ever since it came out. I, I know that this one in the N50 had been around for 11 years around uh, together. So, I don't know if that's five years, six years, whatever it is, I've had significant amount of time uh, you know, prob I don't know how many hours, but I would say thousands of hours uh, probably wrapped up into this guy here. So I'm very familiar with it. But again, that momentary shift happens real fast, and it's exactly how I'm pressing the button. If I hold it down, you know, it, it's doing it exactly how I would expect. If, if, as if I were pushing this button on an actual keyboard, it's got to act exactly the same way. So this one sometimes doesn't even... doesn't even you register that I've actually pressed it and see after I've yeah see it shouldn't be doing that so I think that's part of it you know I'm not sitting there with my finger on the key mashing it that fast in game but, you know, if I'm switching back and forth and I have to hit one of these shift state buttons real fast and go back, it's got to it's gotta be real time. It's got to know when I've got this held down that this means more than any of these other keys that were held down. Um, it, it's got to be able to know, hey, if I've got the W and the D key pressed down, they're pressed down. No matter how many other buttons I hit, no matter whatever else I do, it's got to remember that those are in that state. And it's got to be able to pull those 
to actually look at those buttons and pull them in real time and say, hey, are you still held down or are you not? And it's got to know that. Where uh, I feel the Razor Nostromo, I think that's kind of the problems I'm having at the moment. So um, actually sitting there and doing that to try to get them to repeat, uh, I haven't, I mean, the only time that I've really been trying is right now. Um, I'm going to continue to try to do that. Um, but I wanted to get this out to out to those uh, the Razer uh, technical support team uh, so that um, they can pass that along to their development team and have them look at this and determine uh, you know what what it is that they can do to try to get the software on the Razer Nostromo to be as responsive as that found on the N52. And I'm hoping that they have. Uh, some of these units um, that they can play with. I'm assuming since they probably own this guy now as well that they've got those and they, they can see that um, in real time and reproduce what I'm seeing here. So I don't know what happened with that moment where the red light was staying on and then the whole light went off. It looked like the uh, there was some sort of an error and the Nostromo reset itself because the light went off and came back on and then it was working. Um, but uh, I'm glad I got that recorded as well. That's the first time I'd seen that since uh, using this. So, anyway, the latency issue, um, the Razer Nostromo off uh, definitely has some, uh, and then how it's actually reacting to button pushes. So when I hit this red cycle, it has to know that you know that this that I'm meaning to push one through nine or whatever is assigned to this particular key map it's got to take over what's already being held down because that's what an, a modifier is sometimes you'll be going forward and you want to modify this so that this is a completely different key well you know it's got to be able to switch in real time with what you have if you intend to hold the button down while you're pushing this one you're probably meaning to, for this button to happen so um, you know that's something to address in the software um, but again I think the the mechanics of of the actual Razer Nostromo are great um, this this wrist rest um, has a good kind of a I don't know the, the the way to describe it but where this was very smooth this one kind of has a little bit of a rubbery texture to it so uh, I like that the uh, the space key or the bigger key on the bottom uh, I think you know the the people complained about the N52 TE having this I never had an N52 TE but this button was very very hard to push um, as um, you know this one has you know worked really well for me so far uh, so I think that they have fixed that issue from the N52 TE um, some other folks have said that the directional pad you could roll it around from a direction very easily in the N52 um, they're saying that you can't do that so easily in the uh, Razer Nostromo the uh, person I was talking to from technical support did say that um, they were addressing this issue in a further or in a, a later software release uh, which I think is good one other thing this button here much more difficult to push on the N52 it takes a pretty good amount of, of, of pushing to hit it whereas on the Razer Nostromo it's very very easy to push I don't think that's a bad thing it's just something I have to have to get used to so uh, overall for for what I use the directional pad for for jumping and crouching uh, I think that the directional pad on on the Razer Nostromo is, is fantastic I, I, I like it I think it has a good feel to it um, mine squeaks so you can see I've put a lot of uh, a lot of hours into it but uh, the directional pad is definitely easier to push on the N52. Um, you can still find these out there. Um, they're kind of difficult to find, but they are still out there on like eBay and stuff like that. Um, but otherwise, um, it's time to move on to the Razer Nostromo. Uh, I believe this is a superior design to any other gaming pad that you can get out there. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of others. That the Logitech G13 has a pretty cool LCD screen, but I think for ergonomics, the way that your hand sits on this and you get that muscle memory and you know exactly where your your fingers go, you can't beat definitely can't beat this design. So I'm going to try to work with Razer support, get them this info, and hopefully have them uh, help me resolve this so that um, I can quit documenting the issues and document the good things that I see about this. So. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll talk to you later.